Do you need errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insurers. Apply now at cplic.net and let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. Okay, picture this. You're a brand new field adjuster and you've started receiving daily claims assignments. You've got good training, but you know you've got a little ways to go when it comes to experience. That's okay, experience comes with doing. But one of your first claims is a house fire and you find out that there's a fire investigator assigned to the claim to determine the origin of the fire and they will be reviewing your claim file to help them with their investigation. So what can you do to make sure that your documentation gives them everything that they need without having to send you back out? Find out starting now. You're watching The Property IA Show. Hey, it's Matt here with the Property IA Show on Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe to Adjuster TV right here on YouTube. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. And if you like this video, then you're correct. In this video, we chat with Stephen Tripp from the global forensic engineering firm Jensen Hughes about fire and claim investigations during COVID. But first, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the IA firm CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. That's you and me. As a full service independent insurance adjusting company, CCMS and Associates specializes in every part of the claim service cycle, including day-to-day -day property claims, casualty claims, complex claims, and residential and commercial losses. Strategic process, measured results, CCMS and Associates. They are currently looking for adjusters who are interested in deploying for TWIA, AKA Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information and to join their roster, send an email over to careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work with us. So without further ado, here's my interview with Steve and Tripp from Jensen Hughes. Welcome guys. I'm here with Steve and Tripp from the forensic engineering firm, Jensen Hughes. And uh, Steve, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your firm and then we'll kind of get some information from Tripp. Absolutely, great. Thanks for having us on. Um, Jensen Hughes, first of all, I'm the practice leader with Jensen Hughes and we are a multidisciplinary engineering firm from fire to structural, mechanical, electrical, we look at all types of failures all across the world, actually. And we have a large team in the U.S., about 30 offices. And Trip heads up our fire team on the East Coast. And we have fire groups all over the country. So I'm going to let Trip introduce himself. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And, and Matt, most importantly, thank you for having us on. Uh, so I'm the director of East Coast Fire Forensics. Uh, I'm also a mechanical engineer. Uh, basically, I oversee our East Coast fire forensic team. I also conduct forensic investigations, fire and explosions, uh, also some non-fire, non-explosion related forensic investigation, basically as a mechanical engineer and an origin and cause fire investigator. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so by the way, congratulations on your recent promotion. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, very awesome. Um, okay, so, Trip, I mean, if you want to kind of talk to us a little bit about um, what you guys are doing for uh, safe inspections during COVID. Yeah, absolutely. So this has uh, obviously been a very fluid thing where everybody has learned. You know, every everybody in the country has learned different things. Um, when it started out, the big concern was PPE availability. Uh, there was a lot of internal meetings at not just Jensen Hughes, but every company, wanting to make sure we had the PPE available to conduct the investigation. And, and luckily we did and we obtained more. But right now from a PPE standpoint, uh, the biggest thing is communication. So I need to communicate with other experts. I need to communicate with the insured. I need to communicate with other parties to know what the PPE is expected when we do go conduct an investigation or site inspection. You know, it's not just our health. We also have to take into account everybody's, uh, everybody else's health and safety. And that we also need to check with whatever site we're gonna visit. Before every exam, especially a joint, we usually issue protocols, that's usually normal. Well, now those protocols have to include PPE requirements. What, 
they're going to require, what the site's going to require, and if we are going to visit an insured's location, what they are comfortable with and what is required. So that's the most important thing, communication up front. You don't want parties showing up without the appropriate PPE. Obviously, people can take extended measures. If PPE expected are face covering gloves, if somebody wants to put a Tyvek suit on, by all means, obviously nobody would restrict that. Mostly what we are seeing from the scene is social distancing, which is very difficult because uh, our job often requires multiple experts looking at the same piece of evidence, no matter what the loss, a wildfire, a structure fire, uh, a mechanical loss, a plumbing loss, whatever it is, a lot of times we have multiple parties looking at the same piece because nobody wants to disturb a piece of evidence without all viewing it. That's changed. And what that has done is slow the entire process down. And the perfect thing that comes to mind is a large exam a colleague of mine had on the Midwest, it was a large fire, where it would have been a two day scene exam, but because of social distancing and because the area of origin where they were looking was smaller, they only allowed five parties in at a time with a radio. They would give them a certain amount of time and then radio them, tell them to come out. That drastically slowed the scene down. That slowed it, took it from a two day exam to a four day exam. So all parties need to be aware that things are gonna go a little slower. Adjusters need to know, attorneys need to know, experts are gonna need to know. It's gonna be slowed down. And it's also slowed down, not really a PPE issue, but travel. Um, perfect example, I had to go to Seattle yesterday. I'm located outside of Philadelphia for a lab exam. Used to be four to five direct flights a day from, from Philadelphia to Seattle. There's now one. Um, I couldn't make that one because I was on another exam. I've now increased my travel time by three to four hours. And after my lab, I couldn't get out. There were no flights available because the flights have been restricted due to lack of use. So experts, adjusters, attorneys need to know that, that things are slowing down on the travel end as well. Now, in terms of what we're wearing on PPE, um, it's almost always face coverings at a minimum. Um, it's very difficult. I, I hosted a large exam with 20, 25 people in it. And now I need to give a briefing and I have a face covering on and we're outside, you know, and I need to give a briefing. That's difficult. Needed to communicate with everybody. I'm going to stand over here 15 feet away and yell. Does anybody have a problem with that? Again, we're slowing everything down. And, and the other thing with the PPE is we're not shoulder to shoulder anymore. Like I said, the social distancing. Um, I've also encountered on both lab exams and site exams, health questionnaires, both in a written format and a verbal. And uh, for instance, the lab exam I was at uh, yesterday or two days ago, the company had a policy. You know, do you have any fever? Have you traveled? Anything like that? I've not encountered anybody failing one of these yet. I do not know what happens if that happens. I think the party's no longer represented and we have to shut down and that's a big deal. Um, and I've also encountered written, written forms that have to say, you agree that you have not traveled outside of the country and nobody in your house has these symptoms. You don't have these symptoms. So I anticipate face coverings continuing for a very long time. Obviously, gloves are, are kind of a normal everyday thing, but, but the big difference is PPE used to be to protect the expert in our industry from the environment we are working in, and now it's to protect not only ourselves, but the other parties that are there. So I anticipate PPE being a big issue uh, as we progress even many months down the road. Okay, and yeah, and then for, I guess for folks who don't know what PPE stands for, which I can't imagine anybody these days not, it's basically personal protection equipment Right. Yes, that's so correct. Mask, and, uh, gloves and, you know, et cetera. Yeah, in our field, it's usually um, a mask, maybe a respirator, gloves, Hyvex suit at times. Um, those are the normal standard PPE requirements. Right. And just so, so adjusters know, um, if, if it, they have to work a wildfire, especially on a catastrophe event or even doing daily claims where they have a house fire or something like that, we're, we're going to have to wear a lot of that stuff anyway, just to protect ourselves from getting dirty and from breathing in fumes and sort of the acrid odors that you get when you're when you go to a place that's had a severe fire event. Um, so, sure. yeah, go ahead. And, and, and we that that was the norm before was we yeah. wore it for those reasons. And because of that, we didn't do it as much. So that was the initial fear of you know I may wear a Tyvek suit once every three weeks because it's a crazy scene. You know, I have to get into an attic. Now you know when this all started. Now am I going to need to wear it four times a week? Um, so that, that, that's correct. That was the initial thing, but the, the fear was now needing to use it for COVID related as opposed to the normal. Right, right. And so in, in general, I think for carriers and IA firms and anybody who's involved with the, like on the claim side and the, during the claims process, what it sounds like is, is that they're going to have to start having an expectation that things are going to take longer 
and that they just need to be prepared that there's going to be things that took X amount of time are now going to take Y amount of time. Right. And I think there's also a discussion about what's available. You know, if, if you, and, if, and what comes to mind is a chimney fire I had during this, you know, I could get into the insurance property because they agreed. However, they limited me to what I was looking at, you know, the chimney only, my wife is not comfortable with this, you know, you know, there, and that for an adjuster, that's a huge deal because when they speak with the insured, they may be limited as to what they can access and what they can document and what they can find out. So um, there's a lot of communication with the insured that needs to take place. Okay. Now, are, are you seeing any, any increase in like, for example, like virtual inspections or is there any kind of like a virtual aspect to this that's, that maybe was sort of peripheral before, but is now more prevalent? Yeah. So um, from the forensic engineering side lab exam, we have um, had those being offered and have those being conducted. Really depends on the type of exam. It has to be a pretty basic testing of the exam and somebody's witnessing to accept it. I had a, a lab exam. One of the big things we saw during all this was the manufacturing representatives weren't allowed to travel. So, so many companies use internal engineers as their experts and that was shut down immediately, right? They don't work for a forensic firm. They work for a large motor company. Um, so we had a lab exam where one, uh, one motor manufacturer is still not traveling. It was scheduled for July 7th. It just got canceled. And the attorney proposed, do you think it is worth having them do it virtually? And it was a pretty complex exam in which we were taking apart a pretty severe part of the engine. And my answer always is, if we do not have a court deadline that's impacted, let's delay it. If we have a court date that we need, if, if for some reason we need to move, we can move. But to keep it clean and to give all experts the opportunity, let's delay it. So I think a lot of people are using that kind of method, but courts are back up and running. So there is a point where either you let us host this virtually, you get a local expert, or you have nobody attend. Um, and, and almost all of them have opted for virtual, but depends on the complexity of the exam. It's, you know, it's very difficult to, if you're gonna do one test and you're gonna set up an iPad and you're gonna have the test done, great. If you're gonna be moving all around, underneath, on top, it, it's just very difficult to, to, to accomplish that. I have not seen it on site exams yet. I have seen, a request for information such as Matterport scans. So when a Matterport, which if, if some don't know, is basically a 3D scan. The easiest way to think about it is if you've ever looked to buy a house and you look at the virtual walkthrough, that's how Matterport kind of came about. It was realtors used it to let you walk through a house so you could fall in love with it without seeing it. Um, I have seen, so when Matterport scans are done, it is a property of the company that scans it. They pay to store it, they pay for the equipment. I have seen a lot more of we can't get our, our ideal expert out there. We, would you please share the Matterport with us so they can view that? And then I have also seen they'll grab a local person to go to the scene that they may not prefer, may not be their preferred expert. Everybody has their favorite expert for one reason or another. Um, but I have seen a, a, an increase in requests for shared technology that previously didn't exist. We have had success bringing in uh, manufacturers with the trip said during a scene exam where we might use FaceTime or we may use um, Microsoft Teams and, and allow them to see some of the exam as much as possible. Because as Tripp said, there's a lot of these people just not traveling. And we've also brought in an electrical engineer virtually if that, if that electrical engineer can't get to the scene. So we do a lot of boots on the ground type investigations. Okay, cool. So any, any specific advice you might have for insurance adjusters, for field adjusters who may be involved, you know, get assigned a fire loss of some kind, um, if they're the only person there or they're the first person there, any tips or any advice for those folks? Yeah, absolutely. So I think more than ever, and I know I already mentioned this, I think more than ever, um, the importance of discussing with the insured um, what, they're, what they're going to get access to the PPE they obviously need to wear. And if they're not gonna have access to certain parts of whatever it may be, um, you know, it could be some component in the bedroom and they're not comfortable with. Request photographs from the insurers. You work, find a way to work with them to say, hey, I need documentation of this. Can you provide it? You know, you know the manuals, whatever it may be, uh, the, 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 the panel box, you know, see if you can work with the insured for them to photograph what you can't photograph. Um, and then just documentation document as much as you can. That, that's always been the norm, but now I think adjusters are going to be limited in their ability 
to gain access to certain areas depending on who the occupant may be. If it is a fire loss that's been unoccupied for two weeks, obviously that's a different scenario than say the chimney fire I presented where a family is still residing. In that. Okay, yeah, so, so, so essentially document, 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 you know, and, and there's, you know, there's some inexperienced adjusters or adjusters who may only do or have only done catastrophe work where it's hail claims and maybe some wind claims and then all of a sudden they might get assigned to, you know, California wildfire or something like that. And it's a considerably larger and much more complex loss than hail damage shingles, gutters, and some window wraps, right? So you've got, you know, sure. the exterior, the interior, personal property. Um, and if it's a, a house fire, I mean, I would imagine um, for a house fire where there needs to be a fire investigator, there's going to be a, probably going to be a fire investigator of some kind to like go there and look, right? What we've also encountered, uh, which is not so much COVID related, what a great tip for adjusters, what makes me think about this is I had a vehicle fire recently not COVID related, vehicle fire, it's in West Virginia. It's a little bit of a, of a drive for me. And uh, the insured said, look, I know this is your preferred expert. Is it worth them going out? And I've worked with the attorney numerous times. I said, let me take a look at the pictures. The pictures weren't sufficient. So I said, look, can we have the adjuster go back out and take certain pictures? But what I really appreciated was the adjuster reached out to me personally, didn't know me and said, hey, what do you need? And he said, I will call you when I'm on site. We can FaceTime. And that was you know, we don't want to send them back out there a third time. That was extremely helpful for him, myself, the attorney, and the client. So it's great that that communication existed. I would really recommend, you know, he could have just gone off an email and gone out there and taken some pictures that I requested via email, but he not only reached out, he also offered the ability to FaceTime to make sure everything was accomplished. Okay, excellent. So yeah, I mean, and that's across the board. I mean, it's in any kind of claim situation for adjusters, communication is extremely important. So I think a lot of people will will have in their mind or maybe have will, will feel like they'll get an email from their manager or something and say, by the way, can you take some photos and email them to the, over to this fire investigator or whatever? And they might just do that instead of picking up the phone, calling that fire investigator and saying, hey, tell me exactly what you need so that I don't have to go back out to the house again or to the vehicle again. Um, that's super duper important. Communication and setting expectations. I mean, it, it goes for working with customers, working with the carriers, working with the contractors. I mean, anybody that's involved with, with the claims process or handling any kind of claim like this, if everybody knows what's going to happen next, then my phone doesn't ring, right? Which is a wonderful thing. Um, <laughs> right. It's a, it's a team approach. I mean, from loss till closure, it's, there's multiple parties involved. And, uh, and if all can work together, it makes every member of that team's life, I think, a little easier, at <laughs> least. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So now I'm I'm interested, and I think I think our viewers are kind of interested in 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 uh, a little bit more about your company and sort of like from a practical perspective, how would do would we be interfacing with Jensen Hughes, um, like on a maybe on daily claims or on fires or things like that? We obviously interact with multiple different kinds of clients, adjusters. Um, we interact with manufacturers, attorneys, whatever it may be. From an adjuster standpoint, um, we all we offer, as Steve mentioned at the beginning, we offer a, a multitude of services. Um, some, as you mentioned, as we discussed briefly, some types of losses just require shipment to the lab. Um, others, the adjusters contact us directly. Um, most of those we, we develop a working relationship with. You know, I think if an adjuster and an expert begin to work together, they begin to learn from each other and, and it works a lot smoother. Um, and then also the adjuster to the attorney to us gets a little muddled sometimes because now we've got, uh, I'm not speaking directly with the adjuster a lot of times, so I'm losing that portion. I'm getting in between to me. Um, but I, I think everything works well with adjusters from Jensen Hughes perspective. I know for mine, uh, I, I've never had any problems. Uh, you know, the, the example of the gentleman calling me to, to look at the car was a perfect example. And actually he bridged that gap. You know, he was contacting the attorney the attorney was contacting me. I was replying to the attorney. He bridged that gap by calling me and directly, and we could then discuss, and the attorney was fine with that. So just as we've reiterated, the communication, um, but we do offer all the services needed. If, if, a, if a site visit is not needed, um, I'll tell you if it's worth me going out there or not, 
And, and I know that adjusters and attorneys appreciate that as well. So I think just reaching out if there's questions, if, you know, they have a question on a claim or they have um, just something that they don't understand or they're worried about or there's something that a claim that they don't know if do they need an electrical engineer do they need a mechanical engineer do they need just a fire investigator is is good for them to reach out so we can guide them in that that aspect because a lot of times they don't know what they're going to need right up front and we want to send the right person out every time yeah and if i could just just to reiterate a little bit everything is kind of slowed down we also have we had a lot of lab exams in the fire forensic world cancel during covid those are all coming to play now and we're trying to fit those in with site exams of wildfires house fires whatever it may be availability is becoming limited because we are now if a forensic engineer or a fire investigator for instance worked four to five days four or five days of scenes pre-covid um, they now have to cram in 20 labs in between that. So there's going to be some patience that's going to need to be happy. Nobody likes the 30 emails going back and forth about availability for a joint exam. It's going to happen. Travel is going to be extended. The experts don't like it any more than the client. Um, I did not want to connect to Dallas to get to Seattle from Philadelphia, trust me. But <laughs> I didn't have a choice, and, and it's increased. NFP 921 is the guide to fire and explosion investigations. It is basically the uh, the guidelines that many courts have set forth as a standard that all fire and explosion investigators must follow. Um, also incorporates wildland. Um, there's a lot of changes coming to that document. Uh, I am on the committee, um, as well as a colleague of mine, doc, Dr. Dan Goddick, we were on the committee of 921, and basically formulate this, the guidelines that everybody has to follow. Um, there is a new edition coming out uh, next year. I think it's very important for adjusters and attorneys to realize what the new edition may contain. Um, there's also an NFPA standard, not a guideline. Uh, it's called 1033. Uh, two of my colleagues from Jensen Hughes sit on that uh, standard. That is the standard for which every fire investigator must, must meet in order to opine to an origin and cause, no matter what vehicle, wildland, um, structural, whatever it may be. Uh, there's a lot of changes coming to that next year as well. So. Um, We'll be doing, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be trying to educate as many people as we can, being that we're on both committees, but I think it's very important for everybody out there to realize those documents exist. Um, you can lose an expert if they are not, NF, if they don't meet NFPA's 1033 standard. Um, I would ad advise that when uh, adjusters work with new experts, they maybe mention the, the 921 and 1033 um, reports should contain that verbiage from those, that they meet those standards and the guideline. But uh, it's something that I think everybody, if they handle fire claims, should be aware of that at least exists. And, uh, and for anybody listening, feel free to reach out to my contact information. I can just, you know, a phone call, whatever it may be, to provide more information if they have any questions on both those documents. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, and it, it kind of br brings up a question in my mind about um, what can adjusters do, independent adjusters in particular, if they don't have like a carrier who's going to say attend this training or that training or whatever, um, if they get assigned wildland fire claims um, or they've got daily claims that are, you know, house fires and things like that, is there any kind of training or certification that could uh, help an independent field adjuster um, be able to basically scope their loss according to those standards or that would help them to have a systematic process for doing fire claims. You guys have a resource so, for that or? So uh, systematic process is a perfect verbiage because that is 921. 921 is the scientific method in a large document that, that details that. Um, from an adjuster standpoint, as long as there is a systematic method that accomplishes everything they need to do, I think they're okay. Um, I think they need to ensure if they are selecting an expert or an expert is selected for them, that the expert is very knowledgeable about both documents and meets the, the NFPA 1033 guideline and, or standard. And it's, it's acceptable for any expert to be questioned on that. Um, you know, any expert that's been deposed or on the criminal or on the, on the stand has answered questions regarding NFPA 921 and 1033 going back for, oh, I mean, I've been in this 16 years going back to when I started. So uh, from an adjuster standpoint, I think it's important. I like the systematic approach because if you're doing everything right, you guarantee you're gonna do it right. I happen, and, and almost all investigators I see, fire investigators, 
they start the same way. They photograph this, they photograph the address, the front of the house, they move left. Every time they look through their file, they know which way they're going and they understand it. And, uh, and it, it, that just works for most scientific fields and this is a scientific field, including what the adjusters are doing. They're the first eyes conducting an investigation. They are dictating which expert would be needed and what that expert is going to need when they arrive. So um, yeah, systematic approach I think is, is a huge and that's great verbiage to use. Okay, terrific. So if, if people want more information about Jensen Hughes and, and about this in particular, where can we go? They can go to jensenhughes.com. They can contact TRIPRI. I think we'll have our contact information on there. Um, I'm available by email via LinkedIn. Um, my cell phone's on LinkedIn, so please get a hold of us. Yeah, and, okay. and, and as Steve said, we're, we're here to answer, you know, some people don't reach out because they think we're going to open a file or a project. I, you know, we're here to answer questions. If we can help, we, we will. Um, if our services are not needed, we will advise they're not needed, but we're, we're here to, to talk things through with anybody that may have any questions. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more, for much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.